Here in this question, we're told that the pie chart shows the population of men, women, and children in a city. Okay. Now, if the population of the city, the total is 1.8 million, okay, we need to find how many men are living in that particular city, how many men are in the city. So, here we can see the pie chart, and there are also quite a number of ways you can choose to go about it, but this is what I want to do. And by reason of the understanding of angles at a point, we know that the angles at a point, they add up to 360 degrees, okay. So, we can say 120 degrees plus 169 if i call this theta the angle for men plus theta the sum of the three will be 360 degrees all right however i can say theta in that case will be 360 minus the sum of 120 and 169 that will be 189 so if i'm to get that 10 minus 9 is 1 here yeah, i have 5 remaining if I take 1 from 3, that will be 15. 15 minus 8, that is 7, okay? No, this, this is supposed to be 2, not 189. I'm adding 120 and 169, so that is 2. So, this we already did is 2. We just have this as 71 degrees. So, this theta, theta is given as 71 degrees. Now, the total population was given as 1,800. Now, this is what I would really love to do. The total population corresponds to the whole of this pie chart and that whole of the pie chart is relatable to 360 degrees so i can say 360 degrees is relatable to 1.8 million okay but now i'm looking for the number of men in which i found the angle to be 71 degrees i can relate that to men and for me to have this i can just say i want to Cross multiply this so that men will be 71 times 1.8 million. One, two, one, two, three, okay, divided by 360 degrees. This, this is quite a good way to go about it. You could have said that, yes, you want to calculate it as a ratio of the total, but it's actually going to amount to this eventually, okay? So that's six here, one, that is six. In 180, this is 5, 1, 2, 3, 5,000. Okay, so 71 times 5,000, 71 times 5,000, 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, 5 times 7 is 35. Then we have how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. All right, you can see how to evaluate this without using the calculator at all. So looking at the options, you can see option C amounts to 355,000. and First, getting the angle corresponding to men and then relating it as a ratio to the total angle, which is relatable to the total population. We can see that we are able to get the number of men in the city to be 355,000. All right. The mean of the numbers 15, 21, 17, 26, 18, and 29 is 21. We are to calculate the standard deviation. For us to be able to solve this, we need to understand the formula for the standard deviation that the standard deviation is given as the square root actually the square root of the variance and that variance is given as the sum of the square of the difference between each data entry and the mean over the total number of entries okay so s bar that is the mean so x is each of the consecutive terms in the data that we are giving now we square that difference okay and we sum them and then we divide by the total number of elements so all we need to carry out is a means of identifying this that will be needing in the equation and if you want to draw my table i have x i have x minus the mean then the square of x minus the mean and my data entry we have 15 21, 17, 26, 18, and 29. We are going to be summing whatever we got. So, we can just do that. Now, our mean, our mean was given to us as 21. That is to make our life easy. We don't need to compute that again. So, 15 minus 21, that will be minus 6. 21 minus 21 is 0. 
17 minus 21, that will be minus 4. 26 minus 21 is 5. 18 minus 21, that will be minus 3. Then 29 minus 21, that will be 8. Okay. So if we have to square these entries, minus 6 raised to the power 2 is 36. 0 raised to the power 2 is 0. Minus 4 raised to the power 2 is 16. 5 raised to the power 2 is 25. Minus 3 raised to the power 2 is 9. 8 raised to the power 2 is 64. So if you want to just add this, 36 and 16, that will be 4, then 12, that will be 52. 52 and 25, that will be 77. 77 and 9, that will be 86. Then 86 plus 64, then 14, 15. Okay, so that's 150. So here, yeah, the sum, the sum of this summation or this data value is 150. So now, you can just go ahead to plug in the correct values for our standard deviation that that will in this case be the square root of the sum of this data entry that we have that's 150 over the total number of entries that's n we have 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 over 6 okay now the square root of the division of 150 by 6 we yield 25 and the square root of 25 is going to give us 5 so looking at the options we can see option c that is 5 and that is the correct solution to this question. A bus contains 12 identical bus of which 5 are red, okay, 4 blue and the rest are green. We are to use this information to answer questions 39 and 40. So here yeah, in question 39 we are told that if a ball is selected at random from the box, what is the probability that it is green? Okay, a pictorial view of what we are talking about is being shown here in which we have 5 red balls, 4 blue ones, and 5 and 9 constitutes 9. Okay, so since we are told that the total balls that are being featured here are 12, that means the number of the green will be 12 minus 9. And that makes the green balls to be a total of 3. Okay, so that's as it is depicted in the diagram. Now, we are told that if a ball is selected at random from the balls, What's the probability that it is green okay now generally probability is given as the desired outcome okay is the ratio of the desired outcome over the total possible outcomes okay over the total possible outcomes that you can imagine from the scenario in which you are looking here but now in this particular question we are being told to ask probability of picking a green ball okay now the number of what's the number of green balls that we have there we have gotten the number of green balls to be three okay that would be 12 minus the addition of the other two that's three then the total number of balls that we have was that that is 12 we are told in the question so in that case the probability of picking a green ball probability of picking a green ball will be the Desired outcome that is green, which is three, okay, over the possible outcome. We have a total of twelve eyeballs. So any of them could have been taken from the box. So that would be twelve. And if you want to evaluate this, you can just divide three here, one, three in twelve, that is four. Therefore, that probability is one over four. And looking at the options, you can see option D that is one over four. Alright. So here in question number 40, still following the information that we are given initially, we are told that if two balls are selected at random, one after the other, with replacement, this is what we just need to take note of, we we'll say is with replacement, what is the probability that both are red? With replacement means that you first pick the ball, then before picking the second, you return it back into the box, alright? So, if you want to evaluate that, we already we have gotten the formula for probability, but here we are looking at probability of picking red balls. Okay, so in the first case, probability of picking red first. Okay, that will be the number of red balls, which is five, over 
the total number of balls, which is 12. All right. Then, you know, after taking that red ball, we are told that we also replace it before taking the other one. So, the probability of picking red second in this particular scenario will also be the total number of red. Now, since you replace it, the number had been returned to 5. Okay. So, that's still 5 over the total number. Since we replace it, the total number also had returned to 12. Okay. Now, I didn't mean that we are told that it is without replacement. This second case would have been 4 over 11 if it is without replacement. Okay. So, that's what you need to note if you are coming across this question in some other exam. And we are being told that it is without replacement. All right. So, it will be 4 over 11 because the red balls had diminished by 1. The total had also diminished by 1. Okay. But for this particular one, let's just go ahead. We are not told that. What's the probability that both are red? If we have two case conditions here, okay, the first and the second. So the probability that both are red will be the product of these two probabilities 5 over 12 and 5 over 12. And we want to evaluate that 5 times 5, that is 25. And 12 times 12, that is 100. 44 and looking at our options we can see option a is corresponding to 25 over 144 and that is the solution the interquartile range of a distribution is 7 and if the 25th percentile is 16 we are to find the upper quarter if we have our distribution in something like this okay we can actually have a fill of our data entry and we can just have some divisions in which we are looking at first we are looking at um yeah this is four divisions okay one two three four and yeah this will be the 25 percentile this is the 58 percentile this is the 75th percentile and this is the 100 percentile if you are taking it from zero now from this particular question what we are being told is that we have a difference between the 25th percentile and the upper quartile. The upper quartile is the 75th percentile. So this is upper quartile. Is upper quartile. The 25th percentile is the lower quartile. So this is the lower quartile. But we are told that the interquartile range, that interquartile range, originally the interquartile range. Is giving us a difference between the upper quarter, which is Q3, and the lower quarter, which is Q1. But now we have been told the lower quarter, that's 25th percentile. So the Q1 we're giving to be 16. Okay. The interquarter range we are giving to be what? To be 7. So we are asked to find the upper quarter, which is the 75th percentile. That's Q3. So we just plug in the values of this data that we are giving, interquartile range is 7 is equal to Q3 that we are looking for minus the 25th percentile, which is Q1. That's Q1. So we can just put in the value as that is 16, such that Q3 will be 16 plus 7. When 16 moves to the left hand side, it will become positive. And 16 plus 7 is nothing but 23. So looking at our options, you can see option C is corresponding to that and 23 is our answer. We just need to understand this particular set of percentile and the quartile for us to be able to find the interquartile range and substitute as appropriate to get our answer. All right. So that's all we are going to be having in our lecture today. We hope that this will be of benefit of use to somebody out there. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of resources that you can use to enhance your academic excellence. And that's our desire, that you go out and be the best. And as you do all this, we know that all will work out together for good. Until next time, God bless you.